Is it on? Okay. Thank you so much for the, the warm welcome and thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk to you all today. And really, um, he stole a little bit of what I was going to talk about just to kind of share my personal story and how the Lord brought me here. But it's been a blessing in my first two years here. And it seemed like not too long ago that I was sitting where you all were in chapel and being able to listen to different speakers that came up on stage. And so I just, before I kind of get into what I want to talk about today, um, I specifically just want to challenge you all to not take for granted, you know, where you're sitting right now, because there's so many people, first and foremost, that aren't even able to go to chapels right now or attend classes due to COVID. But on top of that, just being able to attend a Christian university where you are personally able to grow in your walk with the Lord, and also to be able to meet lifelong friends. And so one thing that I started doing my sophomore year in college in particular, because we had chapel three days a week, so it was basically throughout each semester, and I started thinking, you know, instead of just going and being present in chapel, and maybe sometimes I'm paying attention, or sometimes I, my mind is wandering to something, whether it's homework or the next basketball game or practice, um, being able to actually walk away with something tangible each time somebody spoke. And so what I started doing was just keeping a little notebook. And for some, some messages and some sermons, it might have been a couple things I wrote down. Other times it was, you know, several pages. But I would just challenge each of you to not take where you're sitting right now as, okay, I'm checking it off the list, I'm getting a chapel credit, but rather, you know, taking it serious and really learning and, and seeking the Lord as far as what he would have you learn each time. So um, as Dr. McDonald said, you know, and, I, and I've said as well, I finished up my second year here. And, and really, the journey to here, basketball, has been a big part of my life. And for some of you, sports is here. You know, obviously, a lot of my basketball players are sitting over here. So thanks, girls, for coming out to, to support. Um, but we have a lot of other athletic teams on campus. We also have music teams. Um, the list goes on and on, education, majors. And so really any major that the Lord has called you to, use it as an as a opportunity and, and a conduit to really be able to share Christ. And so, you know, take your time here serious. I know this semester and really year has been one that's had a lot of trials and ups and downs with uncertainties dealing with COVID. And right now as a coach, we're getting ready to enter into our season and, you know, do – Due to COVID, we may may play our full season, maybe we won't. But, you know, it's just an opportunity that we have daily to just really rely on the Lord for his strength during this time. And so um, I challenge you with that as well. So today we're going to be talking about, you're going to see, I put together for those who may be more of, of visual learners and some are more maybe auditory. Um, so I wanted to put together a little PowerPoint just to kind of go over what we're going to be talking, what I'm going to be talking about today. So I titled it Living with a Purpose, and so that's what I want to speak today, and, and really during my time overseas and playing, there were several times where I was kind of the black sheep in the culture as well as just in the lifestyle as a professional athlete, and so the Lord just grew me a lot while I was overseas. I played five years in, in Turkey, like Dr. McDonald said, as well as a season in Israel and Poland, and each year I found myself on a new team new teammates, new coaches, new environments. And so I really strived to find ways to still be able to stay plugged in and have community. And so during that time, I did a lot of um, reading, a lot of listening to sermons and messages. And also, if the Lord allowed, I was able to get plugged into a few international churches as well, which was a blessing for me. And so this is kind of something the Lord gave me several years ago and I've been able to share it a few times, and so I want to share it with you all. So we're going to be talking about living with a purpose, and the next slide, I'm going to give you an acronym so it'll help you remember it. So it's ACT, and it's not the ACT that you take to come into college, right, <laughs> that we think about, but rather it's uh, attitude, A stands for attitude, C stands for commitment, and T stands for thankfulness. So I'm going to be talking about those three things today, and I hope that something during this time resonates with you all and you can get something uh, and take away from it. So the first letter, A, it stands for attitude. And you'll see on the PowerPoint, you know, I put attitude, um, we hear the, the cliche phrase, attitude determines your altitude. And 
while that may seem cliche-ish at the same time, you know, we think about our current situation and the pandemic that we're dealing with and just how it can be very easy. You know, we wear a mask and, and so we don't always get to see facial expressions like we typically would. We don't always get to maybe um, just observe things that, that we normally would. And so when we're talking about attitude, it's gonna be reactions to those around you. You know, for me as a coach, it's my responsibility to hold myself in, in high regard to my players and to make sure I'm handling myself properly. But for you as players or as students, you know, what does your attitude look like on a daily basis when you're going to class? When, you know, we had 5.30 a.m. practice this morning in about 52, 53 deg degree gym, and yet my girls, you know, props to them, they came in and still had good attitudes, but it could have been very easy for them not to. And so reactions to others and then really people observing your reactions. You know, I can't tell you how many times as a player um, things are going to happen on the floor that maybe I agree with or I don't. Um, but as the season would go on and my teammates, you know, saw things that maybe I didn't do or I did do on the floor and they would come up to me and say, well, you know, Megan, um, how come you never cuss? You know, how come you never really um, just – yell at the refs and so it was an opportunity while it wasn't necessarily you know sometimes we think our attitude well it's something you said um and and that person didn't like it or but it's also a lot of times just how you're carrying yourself and whether that means smiling whether that means your eyebrows are down um or simply choosing to just live the life that the lord would have you live and reflect him in what you're saying or choosing not to say because words are really powerful and I was talking to one of my, my professors last night from Liberty, actually, and she's still a big part of my family as well as my life. And she had gone to see um, a music recital, which, you know, those are starting to kind of come back in. But with COVID, everything has been shut down, obviously. And so she said one of the things that the lady um, up there was sharing, she said, was um, that fear paralyzes and that faith propels. And, you know, I, I'd never really heard that before. I've heard it in various ways, but fear paralyzes. And right now, we're in a situation that can be somewhat fearful with, you know, different uh, COVID things going on and, and also could be family things. But keeping the faith, right? I mean, this semester for a lot of you looks different. I know I've talked to some of my players in the classroom even because you have some hybrid classes. So you're in class, you're not in class, you're having to learn some um, through the computer, and yet um, it's an opportunity to, to keep the faith and to just do well and not, not use the uncertainties of life as an excuse, but maintaining that positive attitude throughout the whole time. And so a verse I want to share with you is 1 Peter 4.12, and it says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is doing is doing away with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. And I think this verse really summarizes even the, the second song that we sang, you know, talking about um, just the humility of, of the Lord and what he's done for us. But when you think about it, the attitude that Jesus displayed, he's the only perfect human on this earth, and we can never, never achieve what, what he did. And yet the attitude that he had to humbly go to the cross and to lay his life down for us and to give us the opportunity that we now have to be able to spend eternity with him and to have a personal relationship with him. And it's just quite a reflection. I mean, even, even when I've been to Africa and other countries, the Lord's blessed me to be able to go just to see the attitude of those people who don't have very much and yet they're still joyful. And that, that really comes because of, uh, of Christ. And so, you know, I would just challenge you, if you don't have a personal relationship with him, do it today because there's no, uh, you don't want to wait on that. And it's, it's very important. So the first letter that we just talked about, A, what's it, say, what's it stand for? Attitude. Attitude. Okay. We passed the test, right? Okay. So we're going on to uh, the second one, and that is C in that letter, and it's going to be stand for commitment. And so as you can see on the PowerPoint, it says um, example, of course, being Jesus Christ. And then in Revelation, the verse that talks about specifically you in either hot or cold, I wish you were either one or the other. And that verse, you know, my question to you would be, what do you find yourself being committed to today? 
and on a daily basis, weekly basis. And, you know, commitment has kind of, it's a twofold thing. You can be committed to the right things, and you can also be committed to things that you shouldn't be committed to. So commitment, we think of, okay, I want to be committed, but we have to make sure, too, that we're being committed to the right things. And so first and foremost, I hope and pray that it is to honor and glorify the Lord and spend quality time with him on a daily basis because that commitment needs to be priority number one. You know, I'm, I'm a coach. I have players I'm coaching. I have players that play for, for me, and yet I don't want that to be their number one commitment. You know, I played basketball as a career for seven years, made a living doing that, and yet my identity, I didn't want that to be, oh, it's Megan the basketball player. And, of course, a lot of people knew me as that, but at the same time, I wanted them to know that I was playing for a much bigger purpose. And so when we look at commitment, um, I just think you all are students right now, and so, of course, you need to be committed to your academics. And so we're, I know we're in the middle of, you're in the middle of midterms right now and finishing up those, and so I hope that you prepared well and committed to being excellent in the classroom. But, you know, wherever you may find yourself right now on this journey of life, I would challenge you, maybe you made some mistakes, and we all do, but maybe you didn't take your academics as serious as you wanted to this first half of the semester or that you should have. And so I challenge you this second half of the semester, commit to being all in and being uh, focused and taking care of, of business in the classroom. And really that translates into all of life as you get out into the real world, if you want to say, and you get a job and Lord willing, you maybe start a family. There's a lot of commitment that involves, you know, is involved with that as well. So think about today, take some time and really think, okay, what are my priorities? You know, am I spending too much time with social media? Am I putting the right things physically when I'm watching? Am I um, putting things uh, that I need to be into my mind and into my heart? And so commitment is not always easy, you know, but at the same time, it takes discipline and it takes uh, prioritizing what you need to be doing um, in the right way. And so that's what, that's what I feel like, you know, commitment when we talk about kind of summing up that uh, word is back to that question of what are you committed to? Are you all in or are you riding the fence of, okay, it's the beginning of the week, I'm going to spend time with the Lord, and then as the week progresses, I don't, or, you know, whatever it may be, um, just I would challenge yourself to be thinking about that. The last um, word we're going to talk about, so we have A for attitude, C for, all right, so now we're going to be talking about um, thankfulness and T for thankfulness. And, of course, as we approach into Thanksgiving season and time, it's always easy to, okay, well, what are you thankful for? And, you know, list some things off. Um, but at the same time, really, thankfulness is an attitude and, and something really a practice that we should be doing on a daily basis. And when we think about, you know, I talked about the beginning of even being thankful of being all in this room, that you have an opportunity to attend a Christian university and a university that strives to put Christ front and center. And I've seen that in my short amount of time here at Evangel. And so it's, it's not just a Christian university in name only, but rather actually living it out. So, you know, be thankful for that. And a lot of you can be thankful for family and whether it's a blood family or people who have taken you in, but people who have been able to invest and pour into your life. And this year as, as part of kind of leaning into our season, I took the time to go through a book study with my team called The Freshman, and one of my, um, I guess you could say classmates in college, but he played tennis at Liberty, and we were in a lot of classes together. He, he wrote this book called The Freshman, so I would encourage you to, it's on Amazon, to grab it if you can, but in that specific book, he talks about a lot of just life lessons of a freshman in general, but doesn't even have to be a freshman as far as what we think about in college or in school. But also, it could be a new journey that the Lord may have you on, whether it's a new job, new place of living. Um, it applies to a lot of various, uh, various things. But in that book specifically, he challenges the guy that's, that's the, he's kind of a, it's a fable type book. And so it's a basketball player, it's a men's basketball player, and he challenges him to take the time to write one to two thank you notes to people that are around you who maybe made an impact on your life. And it's easy in this, once again, very, um, you know, basically age where we can 
text somebody, we can call somebody, we can email somebody, and that's great. It's nice to have that touch point, but you know, too often we don't take that time to physically handwrite or to physically call, pick up the phone, and talk to somebody. And so, you know, I challenge you as we enter in this season, but just in general, is take that time to thank those uh, around you who have made a difference. It could be a current professor here. It could be a mom or a dad. It could be a sibling. It could be a friend. It could be your RA. But you never know what that note of encouragement could do for somebody. And at the same time, it also, you know, allows you to kind of step outside of yourself and really be um, have the opportunity to serve somebody. And so when we think of thankfulness, you know, we talk about what are you thankful for, friends, family, um, ultimately Jesus. And the verse that came to my mind with this was, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And that's Colossians 3.17. And of course, it, it physically uses the word thanks. But so many times, I know for me, having played basketball my whole life, essentially, when I got to college, I was blessed to not really have any injuries going into college. And then my freshman year, about halfway through the season, um, in a split second, inbounds play, I land wrong with my knee, and I tear my ACL. And so in a split instant, a sport that I love, something I went to college for, was taken away from me, and it was taken away from me for the rest of the season. And so then, you know, I, I, I thought, wow, that's never really happened to me. What's, who am I? You know, that kind of thing. It, it caused me to really um, just grow in my walk with the Lord and realize, you know, even though those, those things happen because we live in a carnal world and it's not a perfect world, so things happen that we don't uh, necessarily like, but at the same time, when I stepped outside of myself and I realized, wow, I still have so many things to be thankful for, even though I'm not physically stepping on the court, I'm still able to be a part of my, this team. I'm still able to go to school. I'm still able to obviously have food in front of me. And so that's just one example, but you know, there's so many things, even in the days and weeks ahead. I know for me as a coach, I'm a pretty type A person. The girls will tell you this. I like to have everything scheduled out and so, so far as we've gotten a couple months into the school year, we've changed the calendar several times due to various things. And it's going to continue to be that way. And yet, I still have to maintain an attitude, and it's not always easy, but to being thankful. And being thankful that, you know, we, we get to practice today, and if we're told tomorrow we can't, we still have, have things to be thankful for. And so I would just challenge, you know, you not to take those days for granted and really spend time to evaluate it and think about, okay, what are some things personally in my life that, um, in your life that you can be thankful for? All right, as we kind of wrap things up here a little bit, um, I think this is a verse, Philippians 2, um, 1 through 5, and 3 through 5 I really like specifically, but um, when I was in high school and I was uh, homeschooled three years of my high school and then my senior year I went to a Christian school and at that school we were as seniors required to memorize the book of Philippians and so throughout the course of the year we kind of just broke it down into different segments and parts and eventually by the end we had the whole book memorized and so Philippians since then has been a special book to me and it's one that I go back to quite a bit um, but these verses actually a couple of these are up in our, our team's locker room. And I just think that it's, it's just a constant reminder to myself and also to my players when they come in of just the example of Christ. And so I'm going to read, read these verses, and then I'll, I'll conclude um, here momentarily. This is Philippians 2, 1 through 5. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit, are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others, too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And it goes on in those verses ahead to continue to kind of talk about how 
like I've already referenced, and we all know that the Lord went to the cross for us. But if you really kind of look at the end of those verses where it says, don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others. And, you know, really, I think our world would be in a much different place right now if that was being lived out. And so having the attitude of Christ and his example, of course, it's a perfect example, and none of us are perfect and nor will we ever be. But at the same time, if we can just each and every day put others above ourselves. And so as a coach, you know, we ta I talk about with my team just – I also like the word humility or humble. Um, what does that look like as, as a teammate? What does it look like, though, even as a roommate, a friend, you know, a colleague, whatever the case may be, um, being, being, being humble and having that uh, humility is something that is not, not easy to do all the time because, you know, we're selfish people and, you know, maybe we want the attention for various things and yet, you know, God calls us to put others above ourselves. And so that would be my challenge for you as you enter into kind of finishing um, this semester and continuing, you know, into the coming semester is just uh, thinking about the acronym we just talked about, ACT. So we have attitude and then we have commitment and thankfulness. And so as we kind of summarize it, um, just a reflection for you all is number one, check your attitude. So on a daily basis when you wake up or at nighttime, whenever it may be, check your attitude and see if it's where it needs to be. And, you know, we're not perfect people, like, like I've said, and so that, that can't come f solely from myself. That can't come solely from you. It has to be asking the Lord for that help and guidance because he's the one that's going to allow me and allow you to hopefully be a reflection of him in our attitudes. And then number two would be ask yourself if you're fully committed. I hope first and foremost to Christ, but then also reflecting on what are you committed to? Are you committed to the right things? Are you committed to, do you, are you surrounding yourself with the right kind of, the right friend group um, and, and people who can build you up and not tear you down? And I think, you know, I've, I've heard the, the phrase where, are you a, a drain? Are you someone who's draining people and they, they see you and they're like, oh, you know, that person's draining me of my energy? Or are you someone who's a fountain and someone who's giving life and energy and encouraging those around you. So ask yourself what you're committed to. And then lastly, remember to be thankful. And so it's a simple acronym. I think that, uh, you know, we all can remember that. You have to memorize a lot more in your classes, I'm sure. So, so um, A for attitude, C for commitment, and T for thankfulness. And so I hope you all were able to, uh, to get some, uh, some good bits of wisdom from this. I know the Lord's just constantly teaching me new things and growing me in my walk with him. Um, and so I'm going to wrap us up with prayer to kind of close things, and then you all will be d dismissed. So thanks again for letting me come and share with you all as well. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the opportunity that you give each of us on a daily basis to be able to be a reflection, first and foremost, of you, of you but that we also can just... Um, be a, an opportunity to really be a vessel for you and to be able to share your name with those around us. And I just ask that for each person in this room and the different places they may be in their life right now, that you would really help them to take time to evaluate and to really um, consider what, what's, what I've shared today. And ultimately that we would have um, attitudes that reflect you and with so many uncertainties and changes that they've even had to face as students, as faculty, as staff so far this year, and I'm sure that we will continue to help us to have attitudes that would be reflective of you, that we might be able to um, just sh show you through that and that people can see that there's something different about Evangel University, about Evangel students, and about Evangel um, faculty and staff. And ultimately that difference is, is coming from you. And we also ask just that you would uh, help us to stay committed to you, um, help us to be committed to one another and to not lose sight of just um, the, the different distractions that can come um, throughout this uh, life and, and day to day. And then also just help us to have an attitude of thankfulness um, and a mindset, I should say, of thankfulness to just um, really understand and recognize that we, uh, we shouldn't take every day for granted and that ultimately we should be 
thankful to you, but also um, show that thankfulness and express it to those around us. And so I just thank you once again for this day. I pray that you would help these students and faculty and staff to be able to finish strong this semester, that they may ultimately be able to honor and glorify you in all that they do and say. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.